Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the deciduous maxillary second molar. So what we are going to discuss in this short video lecture, we are going to discuss the chronology of development of the maxillary deciduous second molar. We will discuss the number of this tooth in various tooth numbering systems. And we will discuss the important landmarks that are present on the deciduous maxillary second molar. Watch this lecture till the end and do write the answer of the question uh, given at the end of this video lecture. The timeline of development. The first evidence of calcification, it begins around the age of 19 weeks in utero. The crown is completed by the age of 11 months. The tooth it emerge into the oral cavity at the, around the age of 29 months and root is completed by the age of 3 years. The tooth it is lost by a process that is called exfoliation at the age of 10 to 11 years and around this age the tooth it is replaced by the maxillary second premolar. So what is the number of the deciduous maxillary second molar? in various tooth numbering systems. So in the universal notation, the alphabet that is used for this tooth, the second maxillary second molar, of the right side is A, and then in a clockwise direction, the alphabets, they continue, and for the left side, left maxillary second molar, that's the smaller, the number, the alphabet is J. In the palmar notation system, as I have already described in the previous lectures, is that the alphabet is the same for both right maxillary second molar and for the left maxillary second molar. The only difference is this symbol. This symbol, it indicates that it is of the tooth it is of the maxillary arch and it is of the right quadrant. For the left quadrant, the symbol is this. And this indicates that it is a maxillary arch of the left side. The alphabet is E and it is same for both the right and the left maxillary second molars. In the FDI notation system, the number is 55, five, not 55. So here the first five, it indicate that it is the right maxillary quadrant and the second five, it indicate the tooth number. Same over here. The number is 6, 5, and here the 6, the first number, it indicates that it is a maxillary left quadrant, and 5, it indicates the tooth number. So, for the right side, 5, 5, and for the left side, 6, 5 is the tooth number. Now, let's begin the description of this tooth from the buccal aspect. So the maxillary deciduous second molar, it has two well-defined buccal cusps. So you can see these are the two well-defined buccal cusps that are nearly equal in size and development. So they are equal in size and development. So this cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp. And this cusp is the distobuccal cusp. So in between these two cusps, there's a very faint developmental groove that is called the buccal developmental groove. So the crown of this tooth uh, is, it is much larger as compared to the crown of the maxillary deciduous first molar. The point of bifurcation, like other deciduous molar, it is close to the cervical line. So the root trunk, it is very small. So this part is the root trunk and the root trunk, it is very small. The roots, they appear more slender and they appear more large as compared to the deciduous first molar. The tooth, it appear narrow. At the cervical area, the tooth, it appear narrow as compared to the contact area. At the contact areas, the tooth, it is broad. From the lingual aspect, three cusps are visible. The first cusp is the mesiolingual cusp. So this cusp is the 
mesolingual cusp. This second cusp is the distolingual cusp. And this small cusp is the supplementary cusp, sometimes known as the fifth cusp because two cusps are on the buccal and two lingual. So this is the fifth cusp or the supplementary cusp. And sometimes it is known as the buccal of caribelli. So these are the three cusps that are visible from the lingual aspect of the tooth. Now, there is a developmental groove in between these two cusps uh, that is not quite evident in this picture. So and that groove is known as the lingual developmental groove. Now, the three roots, they are visible. One, two, three. The three roots, they are visible from the lingual aspect, similar to the buccal aspect. So this root is the lingual root, sometimes referred as the palatal root as well. This is the mesial root and this is the distal root. So among these three roots, the lingual root, it is larger and thicker as compared to the mesial and the distal root. The mesial root the second largest root is the mesial root and the smallest root is the distal one. From the mesial aspect, the crown, it has a typical molar outline. So this tooth, it appear more like a molar as compared to the first deciduous maxillary molar. So it appears more like a molar. And why it appear more like a molar? Because of more buccolingual dimension. The buccolingual dimension of the tooth it is more so the occlusal table it is much wider secondly the root development the roots they are more in length and they are also wide as compared to the maxillary deciduous first molar so the tooth it appear more like a molar uh, as compared to the maxillary deciduous first molar the three cusps they are visible this is the mesiobuccal cusp. This is the mesiolingual cusp. And this small cusp is the cusp of caribelli or fifth cusp or, or supplementary cusp. So this ridge that is connecting the mesiobuccal cusp with the mesiolingual cusp is the mesial marginal ridge. The cervical line curvature. So these are the three cusps that I have just explained. So little curvature of the cervical line. So there's a slight curvature of the cervical line towards the crown of the tooth. So the curvature of the cervical line on the mesial side is less if you compare it with the other anterior deciduous teeth. Now from the distal aspect, the distal calibration of the crown, it is less. The buccolingual width on the distal side, it is less as compared to the mesial side so and this convergence it is common among all the teeth so because and because of this convergence part of the buccal aspect and part of the lingual aspect it is visible from the distal side this cusp is the distobuccal cusp and this cusp is the distolingual cusp and these cusps they are small and as compared to the mesial cusps and they are of equal size. Both of them are nearly of equal size. The cervical line curvature, like all of the teeth on the distal side, the cervical line curvature from the buccal to the lingual aspect, it is nearly straight. Now, the three roots, they are visible from this aspect. This is the distal root, distal buccal root, this is the lingual root and because the distobuccal root it is smaller and it is smaller in length and also smaller in width because of this the part of the mesial root it is visible from the distal aspect so from the occlusal aspect the, there are four well developed cusps and one supplementary cusp so the total number of cusps are five so let's discuss these cusps one by one. So this is the mesiobuccal cusp. This cusp is the mesiolingual cusp. This cusp is the distobuccal cusp. And this cusp is the distolingual cusp. And this is the fifth cusp.
also known as the cusp of Caribelli or the supplementary cusp. So the occlusal surface, it has a central uh, fossa. So there are various fossa on the occlusal surface and one of the major fossa is the central fossa. So this fossa is the, is the central fossa. And in the center of the fossa, there is a pit known as the central pit. So this pit is the, is the central pit. Now adjacent to the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge, there are two triangular fossa as well in addition to the central fossa. And the, the triangular fossa that is present just adjacent to the mesial marginal ridge is the, is the mesial triangular fossa. Uh, this fossa is the mesial triangular fossa. There is also a triangular fossa over here. And this fossa is the distal triangular fossa, adjacent to the distal uh, marginal ridge. A well-defined developmental groove, it crosses the occlusal surface in the center of the tooth. And it is this groove is known as the central developmental groove. This is the central developmental groove and from the central developmental groove another major groove is the buccal groove serve as a point of demarcation between the mesiobuccal and the distobuccal cusp. Similarly, a main developmental groove is the lingual developmental groove that serve as a demarcation between the mesiolingual and the distolingual cusps. There are several supplementary grooves that arises from these main grooves that I have just described. So these all are the, the supplementary grooves. So these are the supplementary grooves that originate from these main developmental grooves. There's another unique feature of this tooth and that is the oblique ridge. So oblique ridge is prominent and it crosses the occlusal surface from the mesiolingual cusp to the distolingual uh, distobuccal cusp so this ridge is the is the oblique ridge so this ridge is an, is an oblique ridge as a raised area uh, that raised linear elevation that crosses the occlusal surface from the mesiolingual to the distobuccal cusp uh, this is all about the maxillary uh, deciduous second molar. Now there's a quiz for you. So this is a picture of the deciduous teeth, uh, of deciduous maxillary second molar. So it is similar to which of the following des permanent maxillary permanent teeth? It is similar to the first premolar, second premolar, first molar, or the third molar. So Write your answers in the comments below and I'll respond to each one of you. So for more similar questions, uh, follow us on Instagram at DentalEduHub for questions, images and flashcards. Thank you very much and have a nice day.